Hey, it's Steve Spangler from The Spangler Effect. Huge thanks to the Making and Science team at Google for making this video possible. They're always supporting creativity and innovation. If you want to get in on the conversation, use the hashtag science goals to be able to share some of your ideas as well. I think you're going to like what you see with liquid nitrogen and a light bulb. Watch this. You know, years ago, we'd just call this a regular light bulb, but today we call it a thing of the past. You can't find Thomas Edison's original incandescent light bulb. Within the last 10 years, we've seen the emergence of a compact fluorescent and now an LED light bulb making this nearly extinct. We're gonna talk about the science of a light bulb, the amount of energy that we're saving, and a really, really cool demonstration design challenge this week on Take 5. I'm Steve Spangler, and I'm all about making science fun. For the last 20 years, I've been teaching ways to turn ordinary science experiments into unforgettable learning experiences. I have an amazing team who will do whatever it takes to affect the way people think about science. And to do that, I live by one motto. Make it big, do it right, give it class. Today we're talking about uh, energy in terms of light bulbs and the energy efficiency of going from this old time light bulb, right, into a current light bulb that is reducing our energy consumption in some instances by 90%. The real winner is the fact that we can't find these light bulbs anymore. And while we still can, I wanted to show you a demonstration that I thought was fascinating because we're really talking about success and failure at the same time. Whenever we can use a science demonstration or a, a concept to be able to hang something else uh, onto it for our kids to understand the process of science and that everything doesn't happen just very, very quickly like we see on television, I think that can be a very, very valuable experience. You know, they say that Thomas Edison went through a thousand different models here until he realized that he had to create a vacuum, right? He had to remove the oxygen inside the globe here in order for, uh, for this to work. So today's question is, what if you had to design that again? What if this was the original STEM challenge? This was a, a design challenge for you. How could you make the light bulb light if this were broken? Well, let's uh, see what happens if it is broken. First of all, I have another setup here with the same light bulb that has been broken. And I want you to watch very carefully what happens. Let me put on my safety glasses here. I'm gonna, I broke the outside, right? And so now I'm gonna turn it on and I want you to see what happens right here at this point here, watch. And it eventually, bam, burns out. This is what Thomas Edison saw over and over and over again. That tungsten filament would burn out because there was oxygen that was there. So let's do the same thing again, but this time let's see if we can find an environment that it could be in uh, where you don't have to worry about the oxygen. So uh, I'm gonna keep this in here. So this is our light bulb that works, no problem at all. Let me put this in a towel. I'm not suggesting that you try this at home or in the classroom, but it's a great video or a great demonstration, I think, to be able to show. Let me fold it over here, and this is where we take the hammer and just break the outside globe, hoping that we don't break the tungsten. Ah, let's see if we've got it. Perfect, look at this. Nice, you just have to be very, very careful. So now we have the same thing that we had before. We have the filament intact, but the outside globe. So you know what's gonna happen if I turn it on because the oxygen out here in the atmosphere, that heat energy is enough to be able to just burn up and use up the tungsten. So let's create an environment without having to have a vacuum, right? Or the lack of, uh, of uh, oxygen. Let's create another one and we're gonna do that. I just don't want that to fall off. We're gonna do that right here using my absolute favorite thing in the world, liquid nitrogen. Take a look at this. Here is liquid nitrogen, 320 degrees below zero. Most of the air that we breathe is nitrogen. 79% of the air that we breathe is nitrogen. So I'm gonna let it slow down and, uh, and uh, come to equilibrium just a little tiny bit so it's not boiling nearly as much. But you can imagine it's what, about 75 degrees in the room, so a difference of almost uh, 400 degrees. Um, so so it, uh, it makes sense that it would be boiling. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Now the filament's gonna go down inside, completely submerged, and now we turn it on, ready? Down inside, watch. Look at this. It's the light bulb in the liquid nitrogen. It doesn't burn out because there's no oxygen. The liquid nitrogen there, that nitrogen source, doesn't support combustion, and so we have an underwater light bulb. Take a guess what's gonna happen the moment we pull it out. Watch this, as I pull it out, watch this. 
here it goes, and it's exposed to the oxygen, and this is where, oh, there it is. I knew it would happen. It eventually burns out. So what a great way to be able to show just another example. Is it practical? Not practical at all. Is it something we could use today? No. But it is when we start thinking about a design challenge, I think exactly where we want our students to go. What would happen if, and we took it to the extreme, right? Using extreme temperatures, an extreme solution, an extreme idea. But I think that's the sense of creativity that we're trying to share with our students today. And again, the real winner is the energy that we're saving with our compact fluorescent, our LEDs, uh, everything other than those incandescent bulbs. And contrary to popular belief, they're starting to look pretty good. And if you can save 90 plus percent of, uh, of our energy, it's a great way to be able to do it.